Get out! You are worthless. You don't have to tell me. I'm leaving. Get out now. I know. I grabbed my wallet and phone. But my mother-in-law, Paula, swatted them away with force. She took $750 out of my hand. What's in this house is ours. What? I'm not going to let you walk away with what's in this house. You're going to walk out of here with nothing but your clothes on. She's the meanest person I've ever met. I ran out of the house. My name is Ivy. I've been married to my husband, David, for two years. We met at work and dated for a year before we got married. I was so happy when David, who was very popular among the female employees, asked me to be his girlfriend. He's very funny and always smiling. I believe that this happiness would last forever. David said to me, Let's talk about everything with each other and walk down the road together. I was so happy to hear that. As it turned out, he didn't really mean what he said. But that wasn't the case when we first met. His true nature hasn't changed at all though. I just couldn't see it. It was only recently that David's true nature was revealed. Six months ago, my father-in-law passed away. My happy marriage slowly fell apart. I need to talk to you. That day, David approached me with a mysterious look on his face. This was unusual for my normally cheerful husband. I listened to him and wondered what was going on. I'm thinking of moving in with my mother. David is a very kind man. He was worried about Paula being left alone. I was prepared for him to say something like this sooner or later, but I felt something strange when he said this. I'm thinking of moving in with my mother. What about my opinion? The way he said it sounded like he had already made up his mind. Am I just being paranoid? I wish I had someone I could talk to at a time like this. My parents have already passed away, so even if I want to talk to them about it, I can't. I thought about talking to my friend about it, but my friend is single. None of my friends are married. I thought about talking to someone at work, but David and I work at the same company. I didn't feel comfortable discussing our situation with someone at work. I agonized over the matter alone, but David had always shown me his concern for me. I decided to stop being so nervous about what he said. About moving in together with Paula? I was at a loss for words that day and couldn't respond. Later that day, I told David whether or not I wanted to live with her. What? I'm worried about Paula. I'm in favor of moving in with her, too. Ugh, yeah. It's not what I expected. He sounds so uninterested. I was expecting a thank you, or a I'm glad, or something like that. I wonder if I was arrogant to expect such words. It's not nice to ask for something in return, but I wanted him to at least say thank you. We talk about everything, right? Yes, we do. So, when do you want to move in? Oh, the Friday after next. What? I don't know why, but I felt pretty frustrated. We said we'd discuss everything, and he informed me of his decision. I want to be there for Paula, who lost her husband, but it still makes me angry. Why is it already decided? What? The day when we are supposed to move out. I didn't hear anything about it. You didn't tell me anything about it. I don't think I want to move in with her anymore. David was obviously upset. I'm sorry. My dad is gone, and... I don't know what to do. I just wanted to help my mom. I had to think about you first. I'm really sorry. It's not that you have to think about me first. We should be able to make decisions together. You're right. I fully understand the grief of losing a parent. I understand why David panicked. Besides, we have a bond that we have built up over the years. If he would reflect on this and be careful in the future. I'll forgive him. 
So, not the Friday after next. Please, listen to my request. Yeah, I will. The week after next. The week after next, I have a party at work, so I can't. Okay. When do you think you can make it? Well, Saturday would work for me. Saturday? Oh, is Paula busy on Saturday? It's fine. Let's do it on a Saturday then. And two weeks later, on Saturday, the day came. On that day, I witnessed David's disappointing side. I arrived at Paula's house before the movers came so that I could greet her, but she was nowhere to be found. When I checked with David, he said she was out. It's not like I'm all in favor of moving in together. I'm sure there will be areas where I will feel uncomfortable living with my mother-in-law. Even so, I decided to live with her to support her and David. And yet, she isn't even here. Is this my ego? I honestly don't want her to do anything to make me feel insecure about the future. But she isn't here and that's not going to change no matter what I think. While I was in agony, unpacking the boxes that had arrived, Paula came home. Hi Paula, I'm looking forward to living with you. I greeted her with a smile and she glanced at me and immediately looked at David. Why did we have to do this on Saturday? Why did we have to choose a day that costs so much? Because of our schedule. I told you to pick Friday. Ugh, yeah. She went straight into her room. What was that? It was the first time I ever saw her and David like that. David and I have been married for more than two years. Of course, I have been visiting my parents-in-law during that time. Whenever I visited them, Paula always greeted me with a smile. I wonder if a person's personality changes so much when they lose someone they love. Above all, what is with David's attitude? Can he tell his own opinion to his own mother? What was that? What? I've never seen her like that before. Really? She used to be like that. No way. She's a very kind person, isn't she? Yeah, but only in front of my dad. What? Why didn't you tell me that? Because you never asked me. That's not the point. He should have told me beforehand if he knew his mother had that kind of side. If I knew she was like that, I would have never agreed to live with her. What are you going to do now? We've already moved out of the house and all our stuff is here. You will get used to it. I'm fine. I felt my anger boiling inside of me. You might be fine, but not me. Don't worry. Mom's not a bad person. The only reason she wanted to do this on Friday was because she was worried about our finances. She was just being a little harsh, that's all. No, it didn't seem that way to me. I don't think I can do this. Do what? Living together. I feel pathetic at his incompetence. Hey, are you just going to obey your mom? What? Why? Because you didn't express your opinion at all. It's not like that all the time. She's not at her best because dad passed away. She's probably just feeling lonely and sensitive. You really think so? Yeah. Oh, I think so. You were talking about how she was always acting like a nice person in front of your dad. Oh, I didn't say she was acting. It doesn't matter how you say it. I'm pissed off. I'll take care of everything, so please, bear with me a little bit. Please. My thoughts are all over the place. There's really nothing wrong with him in the last two years, dating period included. In fact, he's a very kind, funny, and caring person. But the person I see in front of me now looks unworthy and pathetic. I don't know if I should give an answer right now. I wonder if all the days we spent together were in vain. I've been struggling with conflict after conflict, and I feel exhausted. I accepted David's words, because my thought process was not working properly. 
but I know this was a mistake. I should have stuck with myself, even if I was exhausted and my brain stopped functioning. I always live my life with positive attitude, and it has backfired on me. I've learned that there are some things in this world that can't be managed. David was there for me at first. He supported me while I had to deal with Paula complaining about everything I did. But after three months, he blurted out, I'm tired. After that, he started supporting his mother. In other words, I had no one to turn to. David doesn't say or do anything, even if Paula says harsh things to me. He would hurry off to his room. I have to be very careful about our neighbors here. There are two factions in the neighborhood, one group of wives led by Paula and another group. They don't get along very well. I see them when I take out the garbage or come home from work and when I say hello to them, but they just stare at me from the bottom to the top and ignore me. I guess Paula says bad things about me. When I pass them in the neighborhood, no one greets me. Why do I have to experience such loneliness? Is there any point in living together? And do I really need to be married to David? I don't need to ask myself these questions. The answer is already there. At dinner that night, I broached the subject. I would like to talk to you about our future. Paula's eyes widened. Oh yes, finally. So when are you quitting your job? What? I'm not quitting my job. Then I don't have to listen to you. What is going on, David? You should be able to make your wife obey us. Yeah. What are you talking about? You were supposed to quit your job and move in with me. What? I can't live my retirement life because you didn't keep your promise. She doesn't do anything anyways. I didn't know she expected me to quit my job. What is going on? I looked at David, but he just stood there looking uncomfortable. I said, what is going on? Mom's getting old, so if you quit your job, you can stay home and mom can relax. She complains about the food I make, the rooms I clean. All she does is complain. I'm not complaining. I'm trying to teach you something. Look, all I need is for you to quit your job and stay home. You can take care of my mom. Then you quit your job and take care of her. She's your mother. I was just trying to tell you that I'm divorcing you. What? And here's where Paula claps her hands happily. That's great. Now you can marry Rosie. Who is Rosie? Mom. Penalty, isn't it? I'll pay it for you. Here you go. Paula shoved a wad of cash to me. How much? $750. You can gladly accept it. Wow, that's a lot of money from someone who is so stingy. I'll take that as payment for all the care I've given you. So am I correct in assuming that you've been cheating on me? I'm not going to make excuses. Rosie is my mother's favorite. She's even offered to stay with us if we get married. Rosie lives close, and if she and I get married, I'll be free. I feel like crying. Even though he was not supporting me anymore, and I decided to get a divorce, I never thought he would betray me like this. I know if he was just a weak-minded person, but I somehow believed he would never betray me. But while I was going through the pain, he only wanted to save himself. I won't cry. I'm not going to shed a tear. All right, then let's proceed with the divorce. You have to fulfill your final responsibility. What? I'm going to charge you and Rosie alimony. Wait a minute. I just gave you some money. That's for three months' care. You have a job, so I'm going to charge you based on your income. But... I don't care if we have to go to court. If we do that, you'll get less money. I don't care, as long as it's settled properly. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not going to let you do that. It's none of your business. 
My spouse is David. You're such an arrogant person. You're a woman and you didn't even quit your job when you moved in. How rude is that? Ugh, whatever. Get out of here. You're useless. I am leaving. Get out now. I know. I grabbed my wallet and phone. But Paula swatted them away and took $750 out of my hand. What's in this house is ours. What? I'm not going to let you walk away with what's in this house. You're going to walk out of here with nothing but your clothes on. She is the meanest person I've ever met. I ran out of the house and it started raining. I heard a bang and I turned around. Paula was looking at me through the window, clapping her hands and laughing. This is terrible. I have no money, no phone, no neighbors to call for help. Thank goodness it rained. It hides my tears. Only the sky was on my side. Soaking wet and with nowhere to go, I sat down at a nearby bus stop. The time must be around 9 p.m. There are no buses at this time of night. Well, I can't afford to take the bus even if it came. All I can do is sigh deeply and look up at the sky. At a time like this, if only my mother were here. I miss my parents so much. If I go from here, I can get there in about three hours. Hey, you! You're soaking wet! The person who handed out an umbrella to me. It was Sophia, the boss of the group that was not getting along with Paula's group. The bus isn't coming. Where were you trying to go? I was going to see my parents. Where are they? The cemetery. What? I don't have a home to go back to. She took me by the arm and led me to her house, and she gave me a towel and a change of clothes. These are my daughters, so put them on. Don't worry, it's not grandmother's clothes. Thank you. The way Sophia talked was kind of rough, but she was a very nice woman. She's a prick, isn't she? Yes, she is. I'm sorry you had to marry into that family. As it turns out, Paula was a famous mean old lady in the neighborhood. She would scout out the newcomers in the neighborhood and talk to them like she was superior. When Sophia defended the newcomer, Paula declared her an enemy. What are you going to do now? I'm getting a divorce. And you have no regrets? Of course not. That's good, because her son is at her beck and call. He's always followed her around, watching her do mean things. There's no way he can protect you. Besides, he's probably cheating on you with that woman. Everyone knows about it? Yeah, everyone in the neighborhood knows. I really should have told you sooner. If you're getting a divorce, I'll help you. The world is not all enemies. An ally appeared from an unexpected place. After that, with Sophia's help, I was able to get proof of David's affair. I was able to get a smooth divorce. I asked for alimony from both parties and got a fair amount. I've kept in touch with Sophia ever since. She told me that David and Rosie never got married. Rosie was just looking for a relationship with someone who had money. But when it came to marriage, it was a different story. I heard she rented an apartment near where she worked and moved out. David left the company. It wasn't his decision, of course. Paula told him that I was a plague and forced him to quit the company. He obeyed her. She wanted to keep David near her, so David works from home and they live sparsely. She's lost her place in the neighborhood. According to Sophia, there were a lot of people who saw me walking around the neighborhood that day. After that, when I disappeared, the whole neighborhood started to gossip that Paula was bullying me. As a result, she don't get out of the house anymore. She lives with David quietly. One time, David was waiting for me in front of the office. He said only one word, I'm sorry, and handed me a small box. When I opened the box, I found mementos and photos of my parents. Paula was furious with me at that time and threw away all my personal belongings. It seems David managed to keep this for me. I'm sure he's a kind man, but... I couldn't stand by his way of life. It would be hard to break free from his mother's spell. 
I felt a little sad, but I don't regret my choice. I'm still recovering from my wounds, but I'm slowly making my way back. Breaking free from the curse of parents. It may be so hard to do. I'm glad you have someone on your side, Ivy. I wish you wonderful days ahead. I'll be rooting for you.